This time we're going to look at a new digital meter from Mustool. This one's called the U0. And it's kind of unique as it can measure AC and DC current without connecting any wires. It does it inductively. Let's take a look. One that's, I think, kind of unique. I, I don't think I've seen one of these before. It's your basic meter, but it's got uh, voltage detection and a current loop. But instead of it being the standard clamp, it's uh, you just put this over the wire and it'll measure up to 100 amps. This is the model. It's a multimeter U-type, a multi-mode U-type multimeter. And I'll put the link in the description. It came from Banggood. We'll take a look at uh, the specs on this unit. It features a rechargeable battery. There should be some charge in it, I would think, now. Um, it has a range of... Um, what do we got here for ranges? A uh, range of up to 40 mega ohms on resistance, 100 amps on current, AC current, and DC current says 100 amps as well. Hmm, you can measure DC current through this loop? Hmm, okay. And has a range up to 610 volts DC and 610 volts AC. But it's, uh, I think the maximum input on here, yes, it says 600 volts is your maximum. Auto input, you get your common and your, your input lead. And, uh, and it just gives you the basics on. It has non contact uh, measurement as well contact voltage detection let's uh, just turn it on and see what it does so power turns the unit on that was simple we'll just uh, hook a couple probes up to it and we'll measure some uh, voltage and current and so forth we'll try the non-contact uh, detection out too I've got my current loop that I can sense with so we'll plug these in, and uh, it says automatic voltage ohms and continuity auto. So let's uh, do some voltage measurements. We'll put the DC power supply on first. I've got my power supply set to 2 volts. We'll see what it does for that. I've set for 2.0 volts. We'll just connect the negative terminal to one and the positive terminal to the other and it reads 2.105 we'll check that with uh, another meter 2.098 volts so we are both getting the same voltage so we know that that is accurate let's turn the power supply up I'll crank it up to as high as this power supply will go which is 32.1 volts and we'll see that it's measuring 32.1 and we will confirm that the voltage is the same 32.14 so our readings are right there next we can measure AC power I'll grab my AC cord. This is on my Variac. Plug in the, the reading and it says 112.2 volts, which is probably what it's set for because sometimes the Variac does get bumped. But we can verify that this other one reads the same. hundred and twelve point three so it is measuring the correct voltage on AC so we know that that part works next I have a 200 ohm resistor let's measure the resistance using the uh, conventional meter here make sure that this resistor is actually 200 ohms it's measuring 202, 201.9. Okay, we know that that's 200 ohms. Let's check it on this one and verify that 
this 200 ohm resistor is in fact going to measure 201 ohms. So we'll put our clips on here. 202 ohms was there. I'm not making a good connection here. I get a bit of oxidation on this. So 200 ohms. Close enough. To get into the current mode, you press down this key here, take it out of auto into current. Okay, now it says amps. All right, let's see. If I put three amps through here, actually 3.1 is what I'm putting through here according to my meter, and I put that on there, is it going to measure how many amps? Oh, look, 3.3 .3 amps. It's measuring the DC current. I'm, drop, I'm drawing right now 3.02 amps. And it'll, and if I turn this up, let's turn this up to the maximum, which is 10 amps that this power supply can put out. Measuring 9.3 amps. Oh, it's dropping now because my, uh, the wire is getting hot. I better turn this down. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's go back through the, uh, the resistor here now that I figured out how this works we'll crank this thing up all the way and now we're going to be drawing 140 milliamps through this resistor and we should see 0.1 well it's measuring 400 milliamps but I'm not drawing quite that but it's measuring it it's saying 0, 0, 0, 0.3 amps According to my meter here on the the, the uh, power supply, it's it's drawing actually 150. To reset it, you uh, press and hold. There we go. That's more like it. Okay. Anyway, uh, it's measuring. This resistor is starting to warm up a bit because I'm putting 150 milliamps through it. 200 ohm resistor. So it measures DC amps, no problem. I was quite skeptical that it would actually do that, but it does. Set my power supply back down to 12 volts. We'll, we'll try a lower current reading on here. I'll just put my dead short back in again and set my meter to measure 2.0 on the power supply. Okay, two amps. We'll reset by pressing and holding. That resets it. Whoops. Auto. Okay. And then 2.0, 2.1. That's exactly what the power supply is reading. If I turn the current up, set it to 4 amps, measuring 3.9. I'll take it to 5 amps, measuring 4.9, close enough, how about 7 amps, Six point nine. so it's, it's fairly accurate for measuring DC, which I find impressive. To measure AC amps, we're going to have to use the old cheater cord to break out because, of course, both wires passing the same current will register zero. They'll nullify each other out. I'm going to turn this fan back on. And we'll just pick either the hot or the neutral wire and just stick our probe across there. And it's 0.3 amps which is about right. If I get my other current meter here out, point three six, point three. Doesn't have quite the same resolution as the other one. So it registers point three versus point three six. So we know that it works and it's accurate for measuring current. 
It also has non-contact voltage detection. You tap down this key. That puts it into either low or high sensitivity. So let's see. I'll put it on low sensitivity and I'll just bring it near a wire. I'll put it on to high sensitivity and we'll see how close I can get to the wire. It's already beeping. It's, it's this one here. This is the one that senses for non-contact. And I can take it to any cord. It should do it to that one too, which it does, you see. Just any, any electrical cord. Now what is the other setting? What is live? What live is for is just checking to see if you, with non-contact will of course tell you if you're close to a live wire, like that. The live one is for actually testing live wires. You just use one probe. If I put it into ground, nothing happens. If I put it into neutral, nothing happens. I hit the hot wire, it beeps immediately, saying, I'm on a live wire. That's what that one's for. So if you're testing sockets, you can also quickly check to see whether it's wired correctly or not, because it'll beep on the live side, and it won't beep on the neutral side. That's what the live setting is for. Also, in auto mode, if you short your leads, it'll test for continuity. So it's got a continuity buzzer. It has a flashlight also, if you press and hold down this button here, which is for your non-contact, low, high, and live, but if you press and hold, it turns on a little flashlight. So if you're working in the dark, you've got a little bit of light. It's not very bright, but if you're working in the dark, it's better than nothing, especially if you're looking for a bad you know, break or a bad fuse panel in the dark. Um, I don't think it does diode testing. Let's go back to the manual here. I don't think it does. It's just voltage ohms. Oh, it does have diode. And it has a capacitance meter too. Well, let's, uh, let's try that out. Let's measure diodes and capacitors and see what happens. Let's see if it'll measure diodes. So here's a diode. I'll put it in the reverse direction first. And I got to make sure I don't touch it with my hands or I'll get a resistive reading because it'll measure my skin resistance. So reverse direction, it's showing it's open, right? It says auto. Put it in the forward direction. It should show me the voltage drop. And it indeed is telling me it's got a 0.9 volt drop, which looks a little high. It should be about 0.6. Let's check it on the other meter, see what it says for the voltage drop. This one has a dedicated diode test function. Let's just say an auto. I guess I should hit a diode test on this one. 0.5, right? 0.5. It should be about 0.6. Yeah, 0.6. There we go. 0.584, 0.585. Let's see what the fluke says. So it measured the diode, but it, it, it measured it at a higher reading than... I mean, it'll tell you if it's good or bad, but it's not going to give you a, an accurate uh, voltage drop on here because it's saying it's a 1 volt drop. It's clearly not measuring a diode accurately. So I would say this is not a uh, meter for a, a technician working on electronics. But if you're an electrician working on home wiring, this could be a very good tool because it'll tell you you can measure current, both AC and DC, through the current loop. You can measure uh, whether you've got a live circuit or not, and you can measure voltage, and you can measure continuity, and your basic stuff. So for basic electrical work, I think this is a, a neat little device. It's small, seems to be fairly accurate, and it's not all that expensive. I'll put the loop up, I'll put the link in the description. Oh, one thing I didn't cover is it has a rechargeable battery. So just turn that little, little plug on the back, and there's a USB-C port on the back that you can just plug in. It comes with a cable plug that into your phone charger or any USB-C and this will charge up so you don't have to worry about batteries. It's got a built-in rechargeable battery and a little dust cover to keep the port from getting dirty when you're out in the field. But I think for an electrician carrying something like this, it's a, it's a no-brainer because it's it's you don't have to have the probes in. You can use it for your 
current measurements. Use it for non-contact voltage so you can tell if there's power on a, on a wire and you can measure voltage or measure current. And then to measure voltage, just plug in your test leads and you're good to go. Before I close off the video, what would this be if we didn't take this thing apart and see what's inside? So we are going to do that. Let's pop the screws out and hopefully it'll pop apart. It might be sealed up, but we'll find out pretty quick. Remove the screws. These ones are smaller. And the unit pops apart. Okay, there it is. Cool. All right. Um, got a battery here. It's a 3.7 volt, 400 milliamp hour battery, 1.48 watt hour battery. You can see that. This is the plug for the little LED, so if I unplug that, we can get a better look at the unit itself. Here is the current sensing loop for the current readings. And a couple components. One IC, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a potted IC, as you can see, so we don't know exactly what it is. But, uh, so there's a close-up of the unit itself. This is your non-contact voltage detection right there on that tip of that probe. And your current sensing loop here for measuring AC and DC current. That's going to go to the display. Everything's all in one chip. Your input down here, going through a bunch of resistors. Common, and you can see the input this is your your signal path into the IC and that's just that's just an epoxy blob so we don't know what IC it's using but uh, this is how most of them are built these days not much to them so just figured I'd give you guys a look inside and there's the battery I'm gonna throw the link in the description this one comes from Banggood. I'll put in all the all the, uh, the codes and everything for them. And I'll say thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Must tools your U zero.